Hey everyone, I'm Hime Utsugi, or just Hime is fine. I am a VTuber or streamer who specializes in playing solo tabletop role playing games and streaming them as well. If you've watched any of my videos before, you have likely seen this little text editing app that I have behind me in this frame. So, this app is called Obsidian. And it may look different from what you've seen of Obsidian, but that's because the first thing here that I wanted to talk about is themes. So when you go to the options and then click appearance, um, it brings you right to this section where you have themes and accent colors. Uh, the accent color is not as important because sometimes the themes sort of overwrite that anyways, uh, but it's good to go through, manage the themes and make sure you get something that you really like. The cool thing is that you can install themes right from Obsidian itself. You don't have to go to a marketplace or some external website to find them. And so you can just sort of filter through them. Um, I like looking at darker themes, um, just it's a little easier on the eyes. And you can also filter by uh, ones that are most downloaded or most recently released. A couple of my personal favorites. The one that I use the most is called Typewriter. That's the one that you're going to see in my streams 90% of the time. I just like the way it looks with this, I think it's a monospaced font and it's just very soft and green and brown. Uh, there's a couple other ones. For some reason, I also really like this 80s neon one, especially if I'm playing like a cyberpunk sci-fi kind of a game. I just really like the pink here. I'll show you so you can see the headings and stuff. And so when I roll, these sections look a little different in color. So it's just very easy to see everything. Um, another one that I also like is the, ah, it's called Say. I like to call this one the slightly better than default. Um, it takes a lot of things that are, you know, in the default Obsidian theme already, which is quite good as well, and just tweaks them in a nice little way, right? Anyway, you can pick whatever themes you like that make you happy. These are just a few of my personal suggestions. The next thing that I would like to talk about is, of course, community plugins, because that's going to really change your experience. There are several that are made for TTRPGs, and there's even one in particular that I would like to talk about. But of course, I'll go through all of the ones that I recommend. So from the options tab, you want to click on community plugins. Here on the community plugins section, just like with the themes, you don't have to go anywhere else. You can click on browse right here and just go through uh, search. It's not just the titles you can search, but also the things. So if you search TTRPG, you'll see that quite a few things come up. Um, looks like they already have stuff for draw steel. That's pretty cool. Okay. So a couple that I would like to talk about in particular, the first plugin that I'd like to talk about just cause it's easy is click clack. This is one that people always comment on when I stream and it's because when I type, it makes these really cute little noises. Um, the one that I particularly like is the quill one. It sounds like a little feather quill scratching across paper and I really like it. I hear a lot from my viewers that the sound sort of scratches an itch in their brain um, and that's I really like that one because it does the same for me. But there's plenty of other typewriter sounds, nice mechanical keyboard sounds. It's, it's just nice to get that sort of feedback. Other plugins. I have a lot of them that I use for writing um, because this Obsidian is also where I draft my own. Uh, tabletop RPGs, but a couple that are important for playing. Can't talk about this without talking about the Solo RPG Toolkit uh, made by Alex Kurowski. Very, very helpful. It has a dice roller. It has a standard deck of cards. You can also use it to pull tarot cards. It appears to only have the Major Arcana. I've actually never used it because I always use regular um, analog tarot cards when I play tarot games, but you can add custom decks if you want to. Apparently we could also use this for my Game Master Apprentice cards. Might have to look into that a little bit. And there's a couple of random generators. I think Mythic is already built in from the beginning. You can even create your own tables to roll on. So if you want to make custom random roll tables or, you know, copy paste ones from PDFs that you have, you it's pretty user friendly in setting up these tables. Um, I don't use this feature that much, but it is nice for when you're setting up and you have like random enemy roll tables and stuff like that. 
So you can see all of these different things. Um, on, uh, one feature I use a lot from here is the progress tracker and then also these dice and these little tab stops to make equal spaces. So I'll show you what this looks like because I use this quite a lot for playing Karen Nathalis. Um, so this is one of my personal files for Karen Nathalis. Uh, I'll scroll down to the bottom. So when I'm playing Karen Nathalis, I always have this footer at the bottom that's used that uses these different things from the solo TTRPG toolkit, such as these little dice here. And so there are certain roles in this game that come up over and over every time you visit a room and stuff. And so instead of rolling each time, I just pick a dice, the dice that is necessary for that role, and I made it into almost like a little hot bar here. So it's like, okay, I go into this new room, I roll for tension. Okay, it's a three, and then I roll to see if there's an encounter. Oh, it's a two. Um, and because this is a footer, as I keep typing, this is always visible, it's always on the bottom. And then here I also use the little counters that are part of Solo TTRPG Toolkit to track things like light, health, etc. So that way, yes, I have a character sheet, but I don't have to constantly come back to it. I can just use this to track the most important things as I go. So all of these are built into the Solo TTRPG Toolkit. So one thing that I also use a lot that is not part of solo TTRPG toolkit is this part this little aspect right here so I'll show you what that looks like because obviously once it's already been typed out you can't really see anything well this is used for inline dice rolls so let's say I'm typing you know Mm, I went to the something and I need to roll to see what that something is so I type in this little semicolon twice and then I can type in the dice type so like D uh, let's say D8 and I can even type like D8 plus 5 or whatever it is then when I hit enter it automatically does the dice roll for me it even shows me what the roll was and so I do this a lot because I like to have a record of what the dice roll was within my text as I'm typing. So you can see a lot here um, that it's just, that's why it's in line, just like this. So, you know, Ryan has sustained two damage, two loss to his sanity, etc., etc. And so it's just there in the line. This is actually not from Solo TTRPG Toolkit. It comes from a different plugin called Inline Scripts, which looks like this. Um, there's a lot of things that you can use inline scripts for, creating your own shortcuts. It's very good for code. However, <laughs> I purely use it for its dice roller, which is built in. And you can use this for lots of other things as well, as you can see. And so I think it's pretty useful to have for Obsidian in general, especially if you're using it to write or do anything else. But again, I like using it for the dice roller so I can roll in line and you can see here and it just becomes part of my journaling where you can see the results right there. Now, the only downside to using this is that you can't see what the individual dice were. So like, if let's say you're trying to roll like three D6s, all I can see is that the result is a nine. It doesn't allow me to see, okay, but was it a three, a three, and a three, or a four, three, two, or anything like that. All I can see is the final result of nine. So depending on what your needs are for a particular game, this may not be that useful. However, going back to Solo TTRPG Toolkit, they do have a nice sidebar these different sidebar expansions for it. So within that you have this dice tray where you can roll and you can see the result here. This one is kind of the same where you can't actually see what the individual dice were, but um, you can click on this, which is part of the toolkit and it's not the dice tray one and you can click and you can actually roll to see what they are. This feels a little bit more like rolling actual dice because you're not using a formula. Like if I'm rolling four d20s, I have to click it four times. But again, depending on what you're using it for, it could be really useful. Since we already have this open, I can show you the other things. So you can see this, this like this deck. Now I can draw. Oh look, I got a four of hearts. That could mean something, right? Um, here's the oracle that the oracles that are built in it comes with mythic and then they've got a couple other ones um and i believe you can add to these if you want to you just might have to do a little bit more on the back end and then this is also some random tables there's a few that are already built in like that but they're very i feel like they're very 5e you know leaning and so you can create your own 
Um, so if you click quick table, you can just type in a list of stuff that you want it to roll. Otherwise, um, when you go to tables, you can create your own. So I have a couple of tables I made specifically for Karenathalus to use here. Um, but also, uh, Cesar Kapakli, his random realities table, um, he very awesomely made an obsidian page for it so if you buy random realities you will get this obsidian page where all this coding is done for you so when you roll you know let's say i'm rolling for exploration well what kind of terrain is it and you just click this button and it rolls for you and this is purely just done through tables all of the tables are here and then these are just sort of shortcuts that get it set up so you can click i really like this random realities has pretty much almost anything you would want it is not location or world specific so it may not fit all of your needs but i mean it does the job pretty well for all the various games i play and it's easy enough if you get something that doesn't work like okay there's no gazelles in this setting okay well fine i'll just click it and get something else you know um and you can you make your own oh it uses the dice roller plugin but yeah so you can make your own tables to be used within this and it doesn't require all that much coding. I mean, you saw right there, it's just tables and you can create a table within Obsidian very easily by pushing a button. Other plugins, so I do have that dice roller one. This is also inline dice rolling. This is not the inline dice rolling I use. Like I said, I use the one that's built in to that other one, the inline scripts one, but I think I downloaded this one purely so I could use it with random realities, but it has some of these nice ones too. So there's a lot of stuff built in as well. Um, and there is some overlap, so it just sort of depends on what you feel like using. This one is nice because it has things like keep lowest, keep highest. I don't really play games where this is necessary, but hey, that is there for you. Um, another really cool one that I enjoy and use a lot is called Open Gate. Open Gate lets you embed websites into Obsidian. You can put them into the sidebar. And this is very useful when I'm playing Karenathalus because I use this uh, website called the Karenathalus Companion and it has all of these decks of cards and information built in so I don't have to roll. It just becomes, it makes playing Karenathalus feel like a computer game because I don't have to bust out my PDF or my book. I have it uh, as a hard copy as well. And I don't have to bust them out every time. Um, I can use this to pull and like, okay, oh, I need to roll for a combat encounter. So I go over here and then it will automatically just like draw the card for me. I could just go again, etc, etc. And so that's right there on the sidebar, easy enough for me to use. So I do like that. You can embed other things as well. So not just this, but if there's other websites that you use, so I could see this being really useful when I am playing Draconim because I could put the spell card generator here. So let's say that I'm playing Draconim and I would like to embed that, if I remember it. Um, you can have a different shortcut for opening up this little command thing. I have control P as mine. It's really nice. So you don't have to memorize stuff. I can create a new I gate. I went and added it and put in my code and everything so you could see what the sidebar looks like with the little spell card builder. And because this is a bit wider looking, I you can change the sidebar size, which is nice. But now as I'm playing Draconim, if I want to create spell cards, I could do so right there, export to, you know, PNG, and then just save it directly into a folder right here, along with the two that I already have. So lots of really great ways to make these plugins work for you. The nice thing is it automatically takes the icon from the website itself, the so you don't have to worry about setting your own icon for that. But it's pretty handy for websites that you want to embed and refer back to, especially if you have random tables. I could also see this being useful if you wanted to embed like fantasy name generator and stuff like that. Speaking of fantasy name generator, there is a fantasy content generator one that you can use here. It is it pulls from a couple of githubs, but still, it is kind of nice. You can also have custom sources that you can use, create your own. Um, but this is nice that I've found just for some random, random stuff and things. That is basically it for the plugins. 
it's really up to you and the game that you're playing on how you want to, you know, mix and match them to get specific things. Depending on the TTRPG you are playing, some of these features might be more useful than others. So like I said, when I'm playing Cairnathalus, I use a lot of these features, the dice rolls, the having the little footer here, it's really helpful, and the cards built in. If I'm playing games that maybe I don't need all that, so when I was playing Draconim, I just needed to type prose. So all I really needed was obsidian so I could have like little tables, little headings. The nice thing about this is you can change both sidebars on the left and right to sort of reflect what you need. So if I was playing Draconim and I don't necessarily need all of the special card drawer tools, I could just even close the toolbar, the sidebar, and focus specifically on my text or whatever it is that I happen to need in that moment. Really mixing and matching different plugins is the best way to tailor your Obsidian experience to whatever you want, and it's really modular in that way. There might be other really cool plugins that I'm not aware of that you could use. There's several that I really like as well. Um, there's one called PDF++. I don't use it so much anymore, but this allows you to annotate PDFs from within Obsidian. That way, if you have character sheets or something, you can sort of edit it here without leaving. Um, it ended up not being that useful for my needs because I decided to, for example, in Cairnathalus, to just have the footer where I could do stuff instead of having to have that character sheet open all the time, but it is nice to have. And... Another one, little one that I like is icon, um, iconize, iconize, it's, I guess it's hard to say that, it's not a real word. But you can add icons to the folders and everything, it's just nicer, so instead of having just plain things here, sometimes I put little symbols, I do this more in like my own games, but you could put little, little symbols here um, on the side to represent the files, it's just a little aesthetic thing that is nice. All right. So the last thing that I want to talk about using Obsidian for solo TTRPGs is syncing your files because, you know, the nice thing about solo TTRPGs is you can take them on the go and play them wherever. And so in order to do that, you need your files to be so synced. So one of the cool things about Obsidian is it doesn't do this from the get-go. Your files are not going to the cloud. They are not being fed into AI or any of that kind of stuff, which is all well and good, except that when you do need it to sync, it's not there right outside the box. So everything gets synced to a vault. It is saved on your computer. So there's a couple of things you could do. Of course, you could save this to like a little USB thumb drive that you take around with you. Um, you could save this to any other cloud service that you can't want to use. I personally have my Obsidian files inside of Dropbox and so I can access my Obsidian files from my phone and I can even edit these because these are just markdown text files. So if I'm really super on the go and want to, I don't know, play Cairnathalus for 10 minutes, I can just play from my phone and edit the files from my phone directly in Obsidian there. Um, Obsidian does have its own syncing service that costs a little bit of money every month. It is a good way to support them because the app is completely free somehow. Um, but I think that it is imperative that you sync your files, back them up somehow so that A, you don't lose them, and B, you have them available when you're on the go. And with all of those, that's basically how you can make Obsidian work for you. It's a great, very user-friendly program, um, but it's also very robust and has a lot of features, as you can see. Of course, this all comes down to the plugins. Obsidian has a lot of things already built in from the beginning, but especially if you're using this to play games, which is maybe not what it was originally intended for, you're going to need some plugins to make that happen. And so I will link the plugins that I talked about in the description so that you can download them and look for them, but feel free to search for TTRPG and RPG plugins or even create some. I would love to see more in this community and I'd love to see more people using Obsidian. Um, it's just very friendly to use as far as, I don't know, does this count as a VTT? I suppose so. But yeah, hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know, join the discord down there if you'd like to talk about TTRPGs with a lot of like-minded individuals. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon.